morning, ladies and gentlemen. This week's episode of Coffee with Jim and James is riveting. James, okay, last night when I think of the initials MG, two things come to mind, okay? First one, I don't know if you know this, but when I had an MG midget convertible, red, traveling through the backwoods of France, my hair flowing under my beret, my scarf, Whistling in the wind, listening to Jimmy Buffett, French wine and cheeses. Or, or the other thing that comes to mind is uh, damage prevention, industry advocates, um, safety. So which, which path should we take today, James? What are you thinking? I say we go the OK811 path. Uh, I like it. With our guest, MG Govia. Is it Govia? Go, Govia? I should have asked that in the show. We said it right the very first try. Go via. And I almost went with it like I was a pro, but I'm not. Yeah. Uh, thanks for joining us, brother. How are you? Man, I, I'm thinking of France now and wine and cheese, but I'm doing good. I'm, I'm excited to be a part of this. I appreciate the invite. Um, like you said, to talk a little bit about damage prevention and what's going out there with excavation safety and what we do, and we'll go from there. Uh, MG, you may get lost on this the story I'm about to tell, but hang hang with me. It's worth it, but... Uh, Jim, you wearing that scarf made me think of world gas. You remember that uh, a few years back? And uh, we had these cool towels and Jim knew it would be, you know, an international event. You know, it was a big show in Washington, D.C. And so Jim took a couple of our cool towels that were branded. He sewed them together on his own in the hotel and made himself a big scarf and we, we had a small footprint at this show. You have to understand, <laughs> these, these booths were bigger than my house and bigger than, than any conferences that I had been. Some of the booths of big dogs like Chenier and, and Exxon and all kinds of big, big names. And so here was us in our little, what, 400 square foot booth. Yep. And, uh, but because of innovative ideas like the scarf, and it was World Cup time. Yes, uh, we, nice. we would, Jim would work, work that booth and pull people in with that scarf and he'd walk up and throw it back. Just and, like that. Uh, man, it, it made for a good time. So good call back there, Jim. But that is luckily that is not what we're talking about. <laughs> uh, we're, we're here with MG and, and MG and, and myself just met a little bit earlier, actually in the pre-show. But uh, when you stepped away earlier, uh, Jim and I were talking and we we're like, man, we just need to have MG on and chat for, you know, maybe, maybe every other week or, you know, once a month, I think it would be good for everybody. We don't have to talk about anything. We talk about our dogs, talk about whatever. Hey, I'm down. I, I enjoy talking with both of you. Uh, we get, like you said, I'll talk soccer. I'll talk dogs. There's so much that we can do. France. There France? you go. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Let's go. <laughs> we'll kick it well, off. Let's Let's do enlighten our viewers and listeners a little bit. So uh, let's uh, let's bring everybody into Oki Eight One One. Can you give us a little update as to what the mission is, what the vision, what you guys are doing? And it is pretty interesting. So I, I know people are going to be uh, fascinated by it. Yeah, um, I love being a part of Oki Eight One One. We're Oklahoma's one call center. Um, every state um, all has Eight One One. Call it before you dig. And Oklahoma is no different. So um, within OKA1, I've been with the company eight years. I started out as a contact center representative, taking those phone calls, trying to help the escalators get lines located. And then through opportunities and um, advancement, I'm now the education and outreach liaison. Um, what that means is I get to do this. I get to talk with anybody who'll listen about the importance wow. of damage prevention, safe excavation, and um, from the law standpoint, as well as best practices. I'm just trying to make sure that everybody's on the same page and trying to save lives. And that's our big mission is just to get out there in front of them. Just a quick, another question. Do you mostly go within the state of Oklahoma? Do you sometimes venture outside of that? Uh, do you have counterparts that you interact with? Oh, great question. Um, most of our work is done in Oklahoma. Our law establishes OKM1 as Oklahoma's one call center. And so there's a lot of state specific outreach that we'll be doing when we go do conferences or we do trainings with excavation crews and stuff. 
But there are a lot of opportunities for partnership. I work with Texas A11 quite a bit um, and with, we call it um, A11 along the border because we have crews that will work on a pipeline and come in Oklahoma and the laws differ just a little bit, how much notice or um, tolerance zone or things of that nature. So we just make sure, hey, once you cross this state line, things are a little bit different. We want you to know the differences, but the overall mission is still the same. And being able to work with Texas or um, I'm part of a national liaisons group where we're networking and kind of sharing best practices. Like, Hey, how are you getting in front of these people? What organizations are you partnering with? Um, that has been tremendous over the last two years. I've met um, a liaison in 30 States so far. And so just kind of seeing how New York is doing it or Pennsylvania is doing it versus wow. Oklahoma and Texas. So it's been a fun journey in this career that's cool we, we've got a lot of friends shout out to our texas 811 folks uh, our friends over there john sparks uh doug meeks uh keith uh, tina all those folks over yeah. there doing great yeah. stuff especially during the pandemic um they've they've shined i think they were ready with their town halls and kind of uh changing that into webinars and i think i may have seen you on one of those mg here recently or not, not yeah or coming up it, it already come out. It already did. Uh, Keith and I um, did a virtual webinar exclusively, like we were talking about the difference between Texas and wow. Oklahoma laws. We have future plans already. I'm also working with um, New Mexico as well. I know Oklahoma and New Mexico don't um, directly border, but mm -hmm. we're both um, small as far as the number of locates and stuff like that compared to Texas. So I get to help them with what their um, processes are. Um, so it's, it's been fun. The networking is awesome. Um, and being able to share ideas and insights has been great. Yeah. They're a good group. Um, so, so that leads in kind of perfectly too, as we talk about, you know, kind of that transition to virtual, you know, during this pandemic and, and as we kind of make our way through the best we can, I guess, you know, OK811 right. was, was a little bit ahead of the curve, and doing some things that, you know, even Jim and I during this, we had to find a way, you know, to really connect with people and stuff. So we, we created this, but uh, you guys were actually ahead of the curve and doing some stuff. Do you want to talk a little bit about that and then what the future holds also, you know, in that realm? Yeah, um, I have to give props to our leadership at OKM1. Our leadership had given me an opportunity from day one. Um, a lot of green lights when it would have been easy to say no. Um, they were like, uh, maybe we shouldn't do a webinar every other week and try to get um, excavators to pay attention to this. And then um, my director, her husband, um, on the side does a, a podcast, which involves like 80 to 90s cartoons and comic books. And she comes to me and she goes, hey, this is something that is popular. Like people listen to podcasts and I'm like, yeah, but they listen about like life, like advice. And I, I don't need a life coach. I'm over to here. Ramsey all day. I mean, I'm not. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. Like, they, yeah, I listen to podcasts for um, financial or life coaching, but I really want to try to do a podcast regarding um, safe excavation. And she's like, try it. So we, pulled up a microphone and did all the work and then I just threw out some feelers and next thing I knew we had like eight episodes just back to back and I'm like okay this is going to work no and doubt. then the greatest thing about the podcast is surely y'all have seen it as well is once they're out there they're out there yeah. and months later you'll yeah. go oh man like 20 people listen to this in January and we recorded yeah. it back in July right. like and you can just really bring cool it back that. up, you know, on social, you can just bring it back up to the top and, and you've got new content for a bunch of new viewers. Uh, exactly. Really, it really is fantastic. Yeah. So the podcast is one thing that we were doing a little bit ahead of the um, pandemic and then our webinars. And then when the pandemic really sat in and we all got sent home and I wasn't able to go and talk in front of these um, excavators anymore, construction crews, that's when we just looked at what else can we do? Like, how can we take this? further so instead of trying to reboot we just put gas on what we were already doing and we took our podcast to this level we've done more promotion with it we have more guests lined up for this year um by the way both of you 
Um, we have tons of opportunities in front of us um, with the podcast, with our webinars and dedicated trainings as well. Um, so if any Oklahoma listeners, um, please go to our website, um, oka11.org. You'll see plenty of opportunities to interact with us as we educate virtually as much as we can. Hopefully we'll be back in front of people soon, but until then, we're doing as much as we can. Well, let me ask you a quick question in regards to that. So I'm getting the feel that even coming out of this pandemic soon, you know, hopefully, um, your this form, podcast and such, will probably remain a thread throughout what you're doing. So you'll do the virtual as well as the in-person? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've had too much success to run away from it now. Um, I... It's where I understand if once the podcasts are out there, like I said, people are catching it six months later. So there's no harm in throwing it out there and then just having that available later. Um, I look forward to seeing 50 to 100 people in one conference and talking to them. Yep. But until then, hey, when I see five, 10 people hitting a podcast in a day, we're getting there. And okay. so I'm, not, I'm never going to just drop it completely. Yep. Yep. I like that. Let me... Let me, you know, you struck a nerve just with your passion and a good nerve in me. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a story. James has been a lot of things to me, including a mentor. And uh, mentorship is a really important thing because it helps people grow. And, it, you know, you try to do things a little bit differently. And the thing that James has always, you know, talked to me about consistently is the whys. You know, why we do this, the whys in our life. And so I want more on a serious or somewhat serious note. What are the whys in your life? Why do you do what you do? Why have you been there for eight years and have this intense, you know, drive in you and it just pours out of your, yourself? Go, go yeah. ahead go with us. Yeah. Um, if you, if you would have been talking to me 10 years ago and said, Hey, MG, I got the dream job for you. You're going to go around and talk about digging. And it's going to be fun. I would have just laughed because, hey, I don't even own a shovel. Like right now, I do not have a shovel. Like it's just not part of me. My first name is Manuel. I'm not known for manual labor. That's just not me, right? And so I had a couple of things just kind of fall into place. And um, this is going to sound like the most um, weird coincidence, but I played kickball in a kickball league. And one of the teammates I had, um, she was working for Okieva One. And I was like, hey, I'm, I'm in transition. I'm looking for something new to do. And she's like, dude, come work here. And I was like, ah, oh, that's nonprofit. That's nonprofit money. I don't know about that. And I went and interviewed and um, just out of total curiosity and had some questions answered. And I was like, okay, I can see development here. I can see growth here. And next thing I know, I'm, I'm working and um, opportunity after opportunity raised. And it was just more of just, experience life skills. Hey, I know how to talk pretty well. I've, I've done stand-up comedy. I've done this opportunity here and there. I had opportunity with um, social media and being able to work um, on the computer and stuff. So I was like, maybe this is the right fit for me. And it was all just kind of chasing like a title at first. And then this is when it became serious. Um, about two years ago, I was given one, one of my first safety meeting presentations, seven o'clock in the morning in Tulsa, I drove to Tulsa from Oklahoma City that morning. So that's almost a two hour drive. So I get there, I'm sleepy, I admit it, but I'm there. And the safety director for this construction company, he's telling me, he's like, hey, MG, just so you know, our average employee here is between the ages of 18 and 25, entry level construction. This is a safety meeting. You're gonna have to keep their attention. Good luck, right? And I'm like, okay. And he goes, but whatever happens, I need you to really talk about the tolerance zone. It's really important that we talk about the tolerance zone and explain to them um, about the two feet either side, no mechanized equipment, being safe stuff. And I'm like, okay. And I was kind of mad at him in my head because I was like, I already have my PowerPoint ready to go. Like, you're going to ask me to tell them something extra when I'm already like with this canned presentation ready to go. <laughs> but I'm going to do the best I can. So doing the presentation, I'm going through it, and um, there's this one slide, and I know it sounds so simple, but it just says dig safely on it, and that's all it says, those two words. And I went into this little story. I was like, hey, guys, OK Warren is a nonprofit. 
that MAR operating costs are covered by member companies. A member company is that underground facility that we're trying to protect. There's a lot of reasons we're trying to protect that underground facility. There's somebody making money by things going through that underground facility, whether it's a pipeline, whether it's electric, whether it's water, right? So we can all agree, let's not hurt somebody's money. Second, selfishly, I wanna be able to take a shower. I wanna be able to watch the soccer game on the weekend. I wanna be able to make a phone call or get on the internet. So selfishly, please don't, don't mess up the facilities. And then I know a neighbor that probably wouldn't survive the winter without heat. I know someone who needs to be able to call 911 if there's an emergency or they fall. So let's also protect the underground facilities for them as well. But I can promise you that no matter what I say about all of that aspect of it, the reason I'm here is for you. I want you to come back to work tomorrow. Yes, amen. And when I said that, when I just said, I want you to come back to work tomorrow, I mean, it felt like I punched every single dude in there in their stomach. And it was just like this weird, quiet, like, did I say something wrong? And I go, so if you go back to work tomorrow, you can provide for your family. You can be there for your friends. Let's move on. And I talked about the rest of the presentation. The presentation ends and the safety director comes up to me. He goes, hey, man, thank you so much. That was a great presentation. Um, do you mind if we talk real quick? And I'm like, no, not at all. Because if you know anything, that means you're about to get some free food. And so I'm like, yeah, I can do this. Um, and so he's, he's like, all right, well, I need to talk to five guys real quick. Um, and I'm like, okay, are they in trouble? And he goes, no, they're not in trouble. So they're walking up and I'm putting away my laptop and everything. And I grab them each a hat, throw them some keychains and stuff. I was like, hey guys, thanks for being here. And as I'm putting my laptop into my backpack, I hear the uh, safety director go, I hope you all enjoyed today's message from MG. I want you to take it to heart. There's no reason that we lost an employee a couple months ago. Oh, geez. Oh, wow. Right. And so I did not follow up with any questions. So today, to this day, I don't know if that means that someone died. I don't know if someone got hurt so bad they couldn't come back to work. I don't know if someone got caught being stupid and got fired on the spot. I don't know. Right. I'm hoping for the last one. Right. Right. But I'll never know. But in my mind, I'm like, if my message can make everybody just remember, be safe. All the other stuff where I talk about my member companies and their utilities or how I need to wash my hair or how somebody needs to call 911, those are all important, but nothing is more important than the life of a construction worker or anybody doing digging around those utilities. And that's why we do what we do. Um, that's my mission for this year. Um, I think I've, I'm getting better at getting the message out, but now I wanna humanize that message. Hey, I figured out podcasts. I figured out webinars. I figured out PowerPoint. Now I need to just keep reminding you, hey, there's, there's lives out there that are working. Uh, you're doing well at it, MG. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's right there. If that, if that didn't convince you, if that's not the teaser that we pull out, Jimmy, then we're doing it wrong. <laughs> uh, we're doing it wrong. That was fast. That was... Hey, MG, uh, we, we finished the show every time with one question and you if you're a listener or a viewer you you've yeah. probably seen it so you probably cheated but we won't talk about that because <laughs> this is there's a high level of integ integrity between these three individuals but if you yes. did you may be proud so question is um mg do you love what you do absolutely um it ties into the story i just shared but Every day when I get to throw on the shirt and I get to explain the, what we do as a company, as not only on the sending out locate requests and not only in getting that aspect taken care of, but I get to go and save lives. I get excited about that. And um, I just look for better ways to do it each day. Um, in the last year, I've grown my networking to work with other liaisons in other states. I have um, really want to be a big factor in the industry um, so that we can all figure out how to do this the best and most efficient way. And um, it just, like I said, 10 years ago, I wouldn't have thought of this, but now I can't imagine not doing it. Well, it, it shows. I have to tell you, you uh, it, it just pours out of you the uh, passion that you have for it. Um, we cannot thank you enough for joining us today. It's been an absolute fun event, you know, pleasure, yeah. we learned a few things. 
And I tell you what, if we've touched one person out in the industry to think twice before they do something, it's a tremendous success. So, Absolutely. you know, again, on behalf of James and I, we thank you greatly for joining us today. We encourage all of our viewers and listeners to go to the oki811.org website and explore it, see what's there, see some of the webinars, see some or listen to some of the podcasts. See, James, I'm getting it. There you I'm go. Getting, uh, connect with uh, MG on social media. You know, hit that connect button, follow them, all those type of good things. Yeah. Uh, so anything else before we sign off, MG? You good or any final words? Um, only thing I would throw out there is if anybody else wants to connect with me, maybe you're not in Oklahoma, maybe you're just looking for other ways to help your damage prevention, um, whether you're a contractor or another uh, one call center, my email is easy. I'm not going to make you struggle on my last name. Um, so we just made it easy. Education at OKA11.org. Shoot me an email. I'll be happy to reach out to you and connect with you because we're all in this together. Um, we want to save as many lives as we can. Now that that's commitment, throwing your email out there like that. That's awesome. Huh? I won't do that. Well, <laughs> embrace your inbox, MG. Yeah. Embrace your inbox. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Hey, hey, it, it, it really was a blast uh, yeah. sharing with you. I feel like, you know, we would be doing the industry a disservice if we didn't connect more often. And so I'm excited to, um, you know, for that possibility in the future as well. So thanks for coming on. Hey, no problem, guys. Looking forward to it. Absolutely. Thank you. And then to our audience, thank you for always joining us. Until next week on Coffee with Jim and James, please, everybody stay safe. Take care.